Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to do some practice with set operations. We're going to start with a quick review because in the last video we kind of went through what they are and now we're going to actually use them. So first one, each and every subset A is in a universe U. So we have some bigger thing going on here. That's U and then inside of it we have our subset A. So no matter what the set is, we have to assume that there's kind of this larger body of work around it. So the complement of A, this is everything in the universe that's not in A, and it's denoted by the little c, you can read that as A complement, or A bar, which is also A complement. These are just everything inside of the universe that's not in A. So complement means not in, so not in A. All right, so the intersection of A and B, that's with this little the notation is important here. That's what we use for, read that as A and B. So I'll write that here, A and B. It's important to be able to read these out because you're going to see this a lot in not just this class, a lot of other classes. Then this one as well, the union A or B, and that's how you read that one. It's kind of like a U basically. Okay, and A and B is obviously exactly what it sounds like. It's the intersection of A and B, so it's X where X is an element of A and X is an element of B. So it's got to be in both to be part of that union, I mean, to be part of the intersection. And then the union is A or B. So now it can be inside of A or it can be inside of B. And notice here, it's really important to know that it can be in both. It's not just A or B. So let me show you with circles here. So A, this is A or B. It's not just A and B because you have to choose one. It's actually also includes the A and B part. It's all those parts together. That's A or B. Important to note that it includes the middle. It's not exclusive. Okay. And now the difference of A and B. So A minus B, just like subtraction you would be in real life, that's the difference. And that's X, where X is an element of A and X is not an element of B. So if I'm an element of A and I'm not an element of B, I would be right there. And that would be A minus B. And I'll write that here. Because I'm inside of A and I'm not inside of B. I'm not inside that middle part right there. So hopefully that's a quick review of those. Um, if you want to go back and look at that more in more detail, you can see the last video. But now we're going to do some practice with it. All right, so we're just going to find the following. We have these three sets here. A contains one, three, five cats. B contains cats, dogs. And C contains zero, three, six, and dogs. So we got three sets here. And we just need to find A and B. All right, and we're going to find a lot of different things. But A and B. So now... Remember what that is, that's A, we, that's that symbol here, that's how we read it, we read it as A and B. So we're figuring out, well, what do they share? A and B, the only thing they share is cats. So A and B is just the set containing cats, not cast. All right, so A or B, remember now we have the set containing anything that's inside of A and anything that's inside of B and also things that they share. So now it's gonna be one, three, five, cats, because I know I'm going to have all of A. I keep writing cats for some reason, so cats. And then now be careful here. Do I need to write cats again? And this is kind of going back to the first video we had on sets, and that's the idea that you don't need to write something if it's there twice. You only, need, you only write it one time. It doesn't show kind of the depth or how many of something you have. It just shows that it's there. So I don't want to write cats twice. I only write it one time. So that's the set A or B. So either one. But don't, you could write the other cats, but I don't, I wouldn't recommend it because some teachers might take off for that just because the, you want to simplify the set. All right, so A minus C. So this means that it's inside of A, but it's not inside of C. Just like subtraction in real life, it's A take away C. And what can A take, what can C take away from A? Well, it's just that three, right? That's the only thing they share in common. So it's going to be one, five, and cats. It's everything in A except that three okay so a, now we have three here so this one might be a little tricky we have a or b or c so now it's this is kind of the whole set so let's think about we have these things right here i could have drawn this from the beginning we have a i'll let this be a b and c this is a good way to do these problems like pretty quickly so now we start with the inside so is there anything that all three of them share and that's what we would put there and that's empty there's nothing in there all right, so is there anything, now let's do A and C. What do A and C share? Well, they share the three, right? So I can put that there. What do A and B share? A and B share cats. So I'll put cats here. What do, D, what do B and C share? They share dogs. 
Okay, and then now I just fill out my chart. So what else is inside of A that I haven't written already? Well, just one and five, those are unique to A. What is unique to B? Nothing, we've already accounted for everything, so there's nothing that's just inside of B. Then what's unique to C? That zero and the six, right? So now we have this fin diagram, and this really makes these problems a breeze. So going back to now this section A and B, we can immediately just look at their intersection, and we see it's cats. For A or B, we could immediately just say, okay, well, it's everything inside of A and everything inside of B. I see a one, a five, a cats, a three, and a dogs. So one, five, cats, three, dogs. So that's how you can do that. A minus C, I look at A, and then I take away anything that I also see in C. So I should, so I'm gonna take, look at A, then three is also in C, so that's out. So I'm left with one, five, cats. So this is a really quick way to do these. And for now, the one, when we get three involved, I recommend doing the Venn diagram. And now it's A or B or C, so now it's just everything in our system, and that's just going to be a pretty basic one here, actually. So 1, uh, 3, 5, I'll do all the numbers, so 0, 6, cats, and dogs, because that includes everything. There's no exclusions here, A or B or C. All right, so now we got to be careful. What's A and B or C? So I kind of like to work with this one kind of the inside out. I mean, well, I kind of like to simplify everything. So A or B, A and B, I mean, well, we already have that one. That's just cats. So it's cats or C. And what's inside of C, which is uh, the 0, 3, 0, 3, 6, and dogs. Now it's kind of a more basic question. We kind of have to simplify this one first. So that's that A or B, A and B, and then now I'm saying or C. And now that's going to equal just everything inside of either one of those, which is 0, 3, 6, cats, and dogs. So we just have to do what's in parentheses first and then do worry about the, um, the or. Okay, so last one, A and B and C. So what is inside? Now this question is, well, what's inside of all three of them? There's nothing, right? So it's just the empty set. Because there's nothing that they share, but we don't want to say no solution. We put the empty set because that's implied to be in everything. There's always the empty set there. So A and B and C, that's this part right here in the middle. And there's not, there's no elements. It's just the empty set. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you kind of understand why we would do a Venn diagram. That really makes these problems a lot easier with set operations. So I recommend doing that if you're having any trouble. Um, and then you can kind of back your way out to some answers. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions. Have a good one.